So, just a, a quick glimpse on, on Jonas. So Jonas is the OW2 application server, which is, uh, which is currently uh, Java E5 certified, and we're working on Java E6 support. Uh, the, this application server is itself built on top of OSGI. So we'll benefit from the OSGI modularity. So we can provide um, an execution platform definition which is right size for your application needs. In clear, uh, if your application is only using the web part, you're only using servlets, you'll provide only the web container on all the other stuff will don't uh, be loaded into memory, and it will be a, a much more lighter and efficient uh, application server. So the SOR principles, which are uh, promoted by OSGI, are also applied to Jana's technical services. Um, it maximizes testability and the overall quality of the application server. And because we are modular, uh, we provide a different execution profile. Uh, for the moment, we define two, uh, we distribute two, uh, two profiles. The first one is uh, which, well, which we call uh, micro Jonas, which is um, the kernel of Jonas. So just understand it by it's the OSGI framework plus some additional services on the deployment support. And then we have the, the full profile, which is a full-blown Java E5, or even 6 now, uh, application uh, server profile. And you can think about, uh, because it's profile, you can imagine any profile that you want. If you want just a web profile, just select the web container on GTA and so on. So, we can do that with Jonas. Um, because we are an implementation of Java EE, uh, Jonas is very well suited to provide the implementation of the OGI enterprise specifications. So I don't know if Nuxio needs that, but it's a list of services that uh, we provide. So we have the HTTP service, for uh, servlets, um, for the servlet layers. So you will be able to, um, to dynamically add a servlet uh, into your applications. Uh, you also have, we also provide a data source service. So if you're using GDBC, and, and we'll, you will we'll be able to benefit from all the connection pooling that you have with uh, Jonas. Transaction service is also provided as an OSGI enterprise service. Uh, the GNDA service is a work in progress. And then you, it's more on the roadmap, but the uh, OSGI enterprise specification also uh, defines two additional uh, service API. The first one is to be able to uh, expose your uh, GCA connector uh, within bundle as services, so all your resource adapters. And you will be also uh, able to use a GPS service, which is a, a higher level uh, data access um, API. Uh, all of these um, services have been uh, implemented as part of the OSAMI uh, European funded project. And they are reused uh, in the different uh, international consortiums. Uh, and Genesis has been selected as the uh, uh, execution uh, platform for the uh, different uh, national demonstrators. So concretely, um, wh how your applications can benefit from, from OSGI? So, the first thing that your application can do is I can use uh, services which are provided uh, by the OSGI framework. So here in blue, you'll see uh, the 
pure OSGI bundles that you can install on the platform. These bundles can provide services with using whatever component models uh, that you have selected. And that services is usable from your uh, AGB, uh, your, for I mean, any uh, Java E modules. So for example, here we have an AGB3 that can be injected using a special annotation. Uh, it can be, the service can be injected into the AGB. So your Java E modules with just a simple annotation, just like an at resources, can be able to use the OSGI services. Uh, and it will be able to, um, to dynamically, uh, it will be notified if the service come on go. So you got, you, you got all the power of uh, OSGI services here. But you also have the other way around where your, uh, your EGB3, which, is your, uh, which have implements your business intelligence, um, this, this EGB3 will be exposed as services, as, OG, as an OSGI services inside of the platform. And because it has been uh, registered as services, it is now visible just like any other OSGI services in the execution environment. So any OSGI bundles can be able to use your services without knowing that it's an HGB3 hidden behind. And what is interesting with this model is that your EGB here is uh, using the well-known EGB application uh, programming model. You're using your standard interfaces, you're using your standard annotation, and so on. And it's very simple to, um, uh, to take benefits of all the Java E skills, which is known by a lot of developers, and to easily mix that with the OSGI application model. So, as a conclusion, the Java E programming model is here to stay because of so many people that are knows that know that that model. So, don't throw away your EGB in action books and so on. And especially if you have a specification to read or something to learn this year, uh, learn CDI. Luxio uh, has noticed this, and it's really the Java E specifications that you should take a look at. And moreover, OSGI is gradually becoming more and more important. Every application server now is using uh, OSGI for, by itself. And, um, and everybody is uh, moving to that direction. So providing uh, some kind of hybrid applications between OSGI, OSGI the OSGI world and the Java E world. So it's kind of a convergence. And your applications will benefit from all the OSGI modularity and all the dynamism. The fact that you can update, remove, and add stuff at any time. 